Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to have a look at a collaboration beer today from two different Swedish counties. So for the home brewery, we are sticking to my home county of Skåne in the very south of the country. And for the away side of things, we are going to go to Blekinge and we're going to revisit a brewery who I've only ever reviewed one thing from on the channel before. But um, I don't know why it's taken me so long to review another beer from these guys but definitely nice to return to them after such a long time. For the home side of things then we are going to go down to Malma or Helia to be specific and we're having a look at another beer from Helia Brewery and this is a collaboration that they've done with Brewkus Neaton who come from Carlsham over in Blekinge in the sort of southwestern part of Blekinge to be precise but the beer itself is called Malma I Love You and it is a dry hot sour coming in at 4.6% ABV. I can't remember exactly when I bought this beer but it was within the last month or so so um, yeah, this is one that I've been wanting to try for a little bit, but I had to go and basically redo my notes for uh, Brewerkus Neaton. But I do have two other beers from them in the fridge that I can now review actually, so you'll see those appear at some point over the next little while. But definitely nice to return to Brewerkus Neaton after quite a while actually. And uh, you know it's always interesting to review new beers from Hulia Bravery as well. I do really like these guys because they're quite you know they're very very small kind of home brewing vibe sort of thing. So um, yeah, definitely cool to see two these two breweries collaborate. And uh, as I say, I look forward to trying my other beers from Breakers Neaton over the next little while. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. This is also the first sour beer I'm having from either of these breweries. The last beer that I had from uh, Breakers Neaton was the My Balalaika, which was, it was either an Imperial Porter or an Imperial Stout, but it was really pretty nice actually, named after that little Russian triangular uh, guitar sort of thing. But I've had a good couple of beers from uh, Hurley Brewery recently which have been very nice as well and they're expanding and getting more of their beers out there a little bit too so very exciting times for both of these breweries both of them going through a little bit of an expansion phase at the moment so um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery websites the link to my other reviews that I've done from Hurley Brewery and my other reviews from Brewery is neat on. Hopefully there will be more to add to both of those lists at some point soon. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system. You can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, county, state, prefecture, province, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Haley at Brewery first off, since these guys are the home brewery. So Hurley Brewery started off as the home brewing experimentations of Michael Nathorse, who was originally from Vintria, quite close uh, to the south of Hylia. So for a number of years he was a home brewer and he built up his own brewery in his garage where he was experimenting with different beers with his friends and he started brewing there around 2013 but he's worked for a number of years in the plumbing industry and for a period of time he was working four days as a plumber and then one day with the brewery but he's also good friends with Torsten Eckner who is the original owner of the Beer Ditch Bar in Malmö and when Beer Ditch began Michael decided that he was going to turn his brewery into a proper brewery so he officially registered the Hulia Brewery Company in 2015 and then they kind of just gradually sort of went along and built up their client portfolio around Malmö over the kind of following years and built up the brewery a little bit but in 2019 they joined forces with Cycle Pipes and Limham's Brewery to form a new company that owns a brewery building together and it's there that the three companies all brew their beers so they've got a 1000 litre brew kit and they're hoping to open up a tasting bar at the brewery at some point fairly soon but as of April 2020 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 55 different types of beer and uh, you know the beer that I would really recommend from these guys is the Hailey Pan and um, recently they've released um, the they had an apple scene an orange version of the Hailey Pan they also had a grapefruit version and I actually liked I think I like the grapefruit version better uh, to be honest with you than the orange one which was quite interesting but I do think personally I do think the original 
Hooli Pan is uh, is very very nice to me. It's a properly old school um, West Coast IPA. So um, yeah, the old US 05 East and Citra and Simcoe. It, it really is a properly old school homebrewed West Coast IPA. So that's a beer that I really would recommend to you from Hooli Brewery, and they are starting to put more and more beers out there on the market. So definitely a brewery that you want to uh, to keep your eye on. I really like their beers. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Hayley Bregory for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different things that they've done. But I always keep an eye out for these guys releasing more beers. So um, yeah, let's move on to the Blaking It side of things. Let's head over to Blaking It and return to Brewkus Neaton, Brewhouse 19, if you want to translate it into English. So as I told you earlier, Brewkus Neaton are based in Karlsham in Blekinge in southern Sweden um, and apparently these guys were the first microbrewery in the county. The company was founded back in 2012 by Dan Magnus Svensson, Magnus Carlsson and also Mikael Lundell. And the three men apparently worked together in the same company and then entered a home brewing competition with one of their creations and they won so they decided that they were going to start their own microbrewery as a result of this. But apparently Karlsham has one of the deepest ports in Sweden and it also had quite a long tradition of brewing beer. The old brewery there was built back in 1883 and then the building was demolished in 1982. But the brewery is at this current brewery is in an old dairy mill near the harbour. Um, the larger kit at the brewery has a 2,000 per litre per brew capacity and they've also got a smaller kit in there as well for pilot brews as well and that was the original setup that they had but over the course of 2019 they started issuing shares and this allowed them to invest heavily in the brewery with lots more tanks and I think maybe a slightly bigger brewing apparatus as well but they also brought in Ida Everson as their new brewer and uh, you know as I say they've bought a lot of equipment as well and they went on to brew around 100,000 litres of beer across 2019 and they also purchased a, a distillery as well to expand this, their uh, their spirit production. They've been doing gin for a little while apparently but I think they're looking at doing um, some uh, vodkas and, uh, and things like that over the next little while as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that progresses for them. But in 2020 they also expand uh, plan to expand the brewery further, further and as of April 2020 when I'm filming this review for you, according to Untapped they've produced around 60 different types of beers and actually as of April 2020 when I'm filming this review for you they've re-released the um, International Haze. I never got a hold of that beer the first time it came out but um, they got a hold of uh, they managed, they got a hold of the uh, the guy from Heretic and uh, they managed to brew a really nice New England IPA and that sort of really brought the name brought Brewers Neat onto everyone's attention actually in Sweden so um, yeah they are building their reputation a little bit these guys so I do have the new version uh, or the rebrew if you like of the International Haze and you'll see that video appear in uh, a couple of days time probably so keep an eye out for that you will see quite a few Brewers Neat on reviews. Over the uh, over the next little while, so um, yeah, I've got the Doppelbock uh, from the Christmas time to review as well. That's one, as I say, I just never got around to uh, to actually reviewing that. So um, yeah, interesting. As I say, good to return to these guys after quite a little while. This is only my second beer on the channel that involves these guys. I think it's the only the only the second one I've ever tried from them. I've never tried too many of the Brewkus Neaton beers. So um, yeah, that's all you need to know about these guys. As I say, 60 different beers as of April 2020, and I'm sure that will continue to expand. But yeah, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this before we open open it up. As you can see this is the typical Helia Blegri artwork and um, usually these beers are very similar just different colours depending on what they are. Uh, the Malma I love you obviously Valentine's colours. I'm not sure maybe if they did the collaboration on Valentine's Day but there you can see on the side there are the symbols for Brucus Neaton on the bottom. I do like their symbol actually the bubbles but there you can see Helia Blegri on the top as well. Just a plain white bottle cap on this one which is standard for um, for for Julia Brewery and it says on the side here, uh, Malma I love you and Söylig er som er for for sitting torhumlad med friska humor. So it's basically it's a, a sour ale that's been um, intense. I think that's intensely uh, intensely dry hopped with fresh 
hop sorts brewed together with brewed till salmons may uh so brewed together with brucus niton. Um detta er var hyllning till Malmö uh, and plats for mongfald mutton of Mulheter. So yeah, this is our sort of tribute to Malmo, a place for I don't know what Mongfold is, um, but meetings and uh, possibilities. I'm not sure what Mongfold is. Mongfald. Um yeah, can't think what that is. I don't know that word. So, um, yeah, that's the thing with my Swedish. It's still a bit limited in terms of vocabulary, but grammatically and stuff is pretty solid these days. But, yeah, a 4.6% um, dry hop sour beer, this one. So, without further ado, let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting. I'm really curious to see what this has in store for us. And I can tell you right away, it does actually smell quite nice. Um, so, yeah, let's get this guy out. I will get into the glass. I think this will be a nice... Kind of easy going sour beer actually. Let's just see how we go with this one. So uh, yeah, as you can see with this beer, and as you'd expect, oh it does smell quite funky actually. As you can see and as you would expect with this one, it's poured a kind of, that head's just fe gone away. I mean it was about a half finger frothy, kind of creamy, ivory coloured head, but that's just completely gone now, look at that. So um, yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured, you know, quite a blonde colour actually, a very kind of rich blonde straw type colour. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, you can see a few little ones going up towards the surface there, but I mean overall, it actually looks, you know, kind of as you'd expect. I didn't expect the head to fade away quite as quickly as that. But yeah, this beer is, um, it does have a little bit of haze to it, it does have a wee bit of haze to it, but mainly it is kind of pretty clear to be honest with you. There wasn't, I don't think there was much in the way of sediment. Yeah, there's only a little bit of sediment in the bottom of that. These Malmö, um, sorry, these uh, Hylia brewery beers are of course all bottle conditioned. Um, but um, yeah, you know, this one is pretty, uh, it is pretty nice actually. It looks kind of what you would expect. I think this is just a dry, you know, I think this is just a kind of sour beer that they've put a little bit of dry hops in, a kind of straight up sort of sour golden ale or something like that. But um, yeah, it looks the part, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. A nice kind of bright golden straw colour, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones, as I say, going up towards the bottom of the head there. So let's take a closer look at this aroma and see how we get on. Ah, yeah, so... The malt base on this one, it's quite bready. Um, it almost smells a little bit like wet leaves or something like that. There is a sort of wet leafy sort of thing to the malt base here. Um, a wee bit of a biscuity note to it. Um, like a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's fair to say there is a bit of a kind of bready quality to this one, like a sort of brown bready note and um, definitely some kind of McVitie's digestive notes but it really smells quite kind of leafy and almost herbal in some ways as well I wasn't quite expecting that from this beer um, so yeah I'm not sure maybe the I've had this one in the fridge I think for about three weeks something like that so I don't think anything I don't think anything would have happened to this um, but yeah, it, this just this beer just does not smell as I thought it was going to. You know, it, it really the thing that just really strikes me about this is it smells like it smells like wet. It really does smell like wet leaves or something like that, which is very very strange. I did not expect that from this at all. Um, but on the hoppy side of things, there's a little bit of earthiness in there. You can pick up a wee bit of floral quality, but the green side of the hops for me are very sort of light and grassy. Um, on the on the fruity side of it. There's a wee bit of a kind of, um, there is a wee bit of a kind of, it's more tropical, there's a wee bit of an orangey note. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like citron mosaic that's in this one. There is something, when I opened the bottle up, I was thinking, right, this is either, I think it's a mixture of citron mosaic that's in here. Because um, there is a wee bit of orangey quality to this one, and it's quite a light tangerine orange, which is mosaic. You do also get a bit of earthiness out of it, which is another telltale sign of mosaic. Um, but yeah. There is a wee bit of a kind of tropical note to this one, a sort of mangoey note, and you've got a few kind of gooseberry, lychee notes, a little bit of an apple-y, well, maybe more of a pear type thing going on with this one too. 
So I mean, in terms of comparing this to you know the likes of the Hewley Pan or the the I guess I've not tried the International Haze from uh, Broukus Neaton yet. This one is obviously a bit more of a mild aroma. You know, it's not going to be one of these ones that just jumps out of the glass at you. You'll always get this. I've always found sour beers. For me, it's all about the kind of transition and smoothness and things that you get out of sour beers rather than it being a really kind of you know beastly aroma and everything like this. So. Um, yeah, I just, I like how, um, I do like how all of this um, sort of goes together, to be honest with you. It's, it's an interesting one. I didn't expect it to be quite as leafy as this, but it just makes me very, very curious to try it. So, um, yeah, interesting smelling beer, this one. Take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of it before you get in. But you do get beers like this sometimes where you're like, you know, the aroma of this smells really, really strange. But hopefully it's a good beer and, you know, knowing... Uh, Heidi Brugge quite well and having ha heard very good things about Brugge's neat on recently I hope that uh, this one turns out quite nicely so yeah let's have a little look at this beer then and see how we get on this one is the Malmo I love you 4.6% dry hop sour from Hulia Bruggery in Hulia, just to the south of Malma here in Skåne, and Bruggeri Sneeton, who are from Karlsham over in Blekinge, just a little bit kind of northeast of where I am. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skål. Yeah, I mean, this one is just very much a, it is just a very kind of, very much a sort of straight up gold nail, this one, with a bit of sourness on the beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, it's actually, it strikes me as quite a wet and oily type sour. You know, if I if I wasn't, I don't think this one is definitely not fruited. But I would have guessed if I was um, trying this one blind, I probably would have thought it was a. Uh, you know, I probably would have thought this was some kind of fruit beer. To be quite honest with you, um, it's it's got a very very wet. It's it's got a very very wet mouth I mean, I expected this to be. I thought this might be somewhere along the lines of like you know some of the breakery it stuff actually um but it's really it really is it's a wet quite a wet oily sour this one i would have thought you know that this maybe had like a little bit of a you know a little bit of orange peel or something like that maybe a bit of orange and lemon zest or something like that added to it um this is this is a curious one it's it's um it's definitely different from a lot of the other sours i've had recently actually um Yeah, I mean, it's a very, this is one of these kind of very, I think this is one of these sours maybe that's been designed to be quite sessionable. And I mean, just for me, even if it's a low alcohol sour, I, I don't like sessioning sours. That's just me. For me, this a sour is a kind of treat beer. It's a, it's a taster. Um, and this one, this one for me, I can see that that's what they're going for. I think they are trying to make a sort of sessionable sour beer out of this. Um it, t it really does take your mouth a bit of time just to adjust to what's going on here. But yeah, the first impression is this is a very, very wet kind of tasting beer. When you take it in, it does have a good little bit of sourness to it. It's not too puckering, but you've just got a little bit of that kind of citricky sharpness out of this one. Um, I'm really not sure exactly what to make of this. Um, it is like, it's almost got a little bit of an English quality to it. It's almost a bit like a kind of English gold ale, uh, golden ale with a bit of sourness thrown into it, which is quite interesting. It's not what I expected from this, I have to say. I thought this was going to be, you know, I, th I really was thinking this would be, um, would be quite different from what it is. I thought you'd have, you know, a kind of straight up, really bright kind of, white pale malty base out of this one. Maybe a little bit of a biscuity sweetness right enough, but then you would all, you would get... It would, I thought it would be almost be like a kind of sour pale ale or something, I guess it would say. But it just, you know, dry hop sour, as I say. Um, I thought this one would just be a little bit pale malt and almost just a little bit drier in the malt base than it is. But, um, yeah, it just kind of shows you. Never judge a book by its cover. But, yeah, this is a really quite wet um, sour, come to think of it. It's very easy to drink. 
but it does take you just a little bit of time to adjust your palate to it. So yeah, let's try and break the, the flavour of this one down a little bit then. So um, across the middle of your palate, you've got, um, you can feel a little bit of that kind of bready, grainy, what that blankets the middle of your tongue. That kind of wet, leafy thing I was talking about, it actually does show up in the flavour a little bit. It really does feel... Um, you do have this kind of wet, sort of leafy thing, just, you've got the, the bready malt that's under, like, forming the linchpin, then on top of that you get the kind of leafy type quality out of this one, which is interesting. And then as you go further into the aftertaste, you've got a little bit of a kind of biscuity quality to the beer as well. Um, so yeah, it does get a little bit sweeter and stuff, but some of the, the kind of, the, the malt base in this is very, very simple, as I say, you've got a nice kind of that pale malty quality, that leafy kind of thing on top of it, and a bit of biscuity sweetness um, as well. So it's it's really interesting how how this one goes together. This is just not what I expected at all, I have to say. But yeah, there is just something about this beer. If I, as I say, if I was blind tasting it, I would think it was like a, you know, I'd probably think this was like an orange infused golden ale or you know something like that that's really what i think about this one and it does almost have a little bit of a kind of grapefruity character to it as well the further you go into the aftertaste i don't know if there might be a bit of cascade or something in this going from the flavor because there are a few elements just to that that kind of grapefruity type thing um so yes yeah, this this is a, a curious one i think and um, probably this isn't the most um, exciting beer you're going to get from either of these breweries. As I, but as I say, for me, Hulia, it's all about the Hulia pan. I really love that beer. Sorry about that, guys. Don't know really what happened with the, the camera there. Just did one of its things. But yeah, um, the hoppy side of this beer then. Um, you know, on the edges of the palate... Again, this is one of the things that I find interesting about this. This is one of the reasons why I would think it might be, you know, a fruit beer rather than a um, a dry hop sour if I was tasting it blindly. Because the hoppiness, you do you do get a little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate, but then it's very wet around the edge of the, the mouth. I mean, as you come further forward, the earthiness, that smooth earthiness does spread forward, becomes a little bit herbal. You reach the front corners of the palate, there is a teeny little bit of a floral note and round the front curve of the tongue it's a little bit lighter and grassy but it really does feel a little bit more um, kind of wet it really does feel quite wet around the edge of the palate and granted yeah when you have a sour beer um, when you add if you're dry hopping that doesn't really contribute to the bitterness but um, you know maybe they haven't added bittering hops to the beer and that's why it feels so wet because you know to get a bit of bittering uh, you know, to get bittering in the beer, you have to add them at a certain point in the boil, and that's usually the more the best time to add bittering hops is early on. But yeah, I don't. I wonder if they have actually added any hops in the boil in this, and if it is just purely, um, you know, a dry hop sour, as they say. I mean, maybe they haven't added any hops during the boil at all. But and to me, it tastes like that because you really don't get much hoppy character it, it might even just be kind of placebo effect you know me expecting it to be there because it's really just very smooth and just a little bit wet around the edge of the palate so that's one of the really interesting points about this beer that you really do get just some of these it really does feel very wet around the edge of the palate but um yeah let's look at the fruity side of this thing then this is quite interesting so yeah when you take the when you take this beer in you um when you take the this beer in you do get a bit of that kind of sour note at the front of the palate and it's almost kind of like it's actually quite like a sort of peary ester to be honest with you it's like a kind of sour peary type quality and you feel that just at the start of the palate and then on the front of the tongue it just juice it becomes a little bit more sort of juicy and things like a little bit more kind of peary it doesn't really have some of it doesn't really have any of that kind of sharper apple element to it but you can detect a wee bit of a kind of whereas if you go towards the back of that kind of fruity th part of the palate at the front you do get a little bit of that almost grapefruity quality out of the beer which is quite interesting and you also um, you also get a little touch of a um, you know you do get a little bit of a kind of slightly mangoey quality the orangey notes that I was thinking would be in there from mosaic or whatever there's a little bit of that too but I find it's this kind of peary ester that kind of dominates and sits on top of that and that's 
where the sourness in this one's coming from. This is, as I say, this is a really unusual beer. Um, I'm really not sure what to make of this. As I say, it, it, to me it feels, you've got that pale malty qu quality, it's quite leafy, uh, and it almost just feels like a sort of peary sour English golden ale. You know, it has got a bit of this graininess to it if you go further back in the on the palate there. I'm, I really, as I say, this is one of these beers that's got me a little bit stumped. I'm really like, you know, what should I think of this? Because um, it's not like, I have to admit, it's not like any sour that I've had in the, in the last wee while at least. So, um, yeah, that's definitely an interesting point to make about this one. So, um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, we should move on to that now. I think we've described the flavour pretty well on this one. Um, Yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, it's quite a, I'd say it's kind of top end of mid body, bottom end of full body, it's a really, there's very little carbonation to this, it feels big and oily but at the same time it's also quite wet, in fairness, definitely one of the more wet sours that I've come across recently, it really needs a little bit of carbonation to be honest, um, but yeah, as you go further into the, the aftertaste with this one, you do get that, there's very little IBU to this one, I would be surprised if there's you know, at most you're going to have 10 IBUs out of this beer. I'd be very, very surprised if it's anything more than that. Um, in terms of the um, in terms of the, the kind of malt base and stuff, as I say, you get a little bit of a, a graininess in the middle of the palate. That comes out a bit further in the aftertaste. It does dry out a little bit. There's a wee teeny bit of biscuity sweetness in the middle of the tongue there, but then you've got quite a wet, fruity, fruity note, and it's almost just a little bit... Um, it is almost just a little touch um, juicy, you know, it's a little touch juicy the further you go into the aftertaste as well, but you have a wee bit of a kind of sour, pardon me, a kind of sour quality to this one too, which is good. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. This, this beer is really not what I expected. I did expect it to be a little bit more kind of... Um, to, it, it, this one, it really strikes me as a little bit like an English gold nail with a little bit of a kind of peary sour quality on top. I think that's a good way to sum up this one. This beer was just not what I expected at all. And I think it's maybe fair to say that this isn't the most kind of beastly beer that you're going to get from, from uh, either of these breweries, to be honest. I mean, uh, Brewers Neaton, they've got the Mai Balalaika, um, which was a lovely Imperial Stout, I remember. The International Haze, which has had a lot of plaudits. Uh, and, I mean, we've also... Uh, uh, um, Huylia Bravery. I've had a really good stout from these guys in Finn recently and I've also had the, the Huylia pan which was great. So this one for me, um, it's not the most, it, it, it's quite a, it's a quirky beer but it's not kind of, um, it's not quite as punchy and as sort of nerdy if you like I guess you could say um, as what you would maybe expect from these two breweries. So yeah, an interesting one but I have to admit I think probably I wouldn't drink this one again. I'd always go back to Holy Pan or uh, you know, I guess I need to try the the International Haze but you know, I think there probably are other beers from from uh, both of these breweries that you'd probably take over this one given the chance. So um, yeah, an interesting one to review this. Definitely quite a quirky beer and you know, as I say, I always like to keep um, reviewing the stuff that Hayley are pumping out. So I need to keep an eye on Brucus Neaton and see what they've also got available. Have a little look on Systembolaga and see what else they have. But you will see a review of their Christmas Doppelbock and uh, you will also see a review of the International Haze at some point in the uh, the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for them. Definitely nice to have them back on the channel and I will wait and see what uh, Hayley Bregory have in store for us next time as well. But yeah, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. This one was the uh, Malmo I Love You, a 4.6% um, dry hopped sour from Julia Bruggery in Julia to the south of Malmo and Bruggery's Neaton from uh, Carlsham over in Blecking. An interesting beer, this one. Um, really not what I expected at all, but you know, when you're doing all these beer reviews after 1200 odd, um, you know, you are going to come across some really random stuff like this. But yeah, thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Julia Bregory and from Brucus Neaton. I will catch you guys again very soon. And uh, yeah, you will see both of these breweries again on the channel at some point really soon. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Have a go at this beer and see what you think. It is really quirky. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below. Cheers.